cheap to meter was the successful and completely false marketing phrase promoted by the nuclear industry in the 1950s and 60s. The goal was to convince American consumers that atomic power belonged in the modern American landscape. The successful development of cheap and clean renewable energy sources during the global warming crisis requires a new marketing ploy for the nuclear industry. They now need consumers to believe that atomic power is carbon free and the bridge energy source needed to get us to a sustainable energy future. But is it true? Activists within the safe energy movement answer the most often asked questions about the merit of using nuclear plants to fight climate change. In all fairness, let's hear from the nuclear industry first. Hello. I'm Will Newcomb of NUCORPAC, Nuclear Corporation's Political Action Committee. In the good old days of too cheap to meter, governments wanted nuclear power, and we gave it to them. To you. <laughs> but now the old nukes are shutting down and they're expensive to decommission. So-called green energy is the flavor of the month. So what do we do? We go with the flow. <laughs> Nuclear power is free of carbon emissions. We don't pollute. So we're the perfect bridge from filthy fossil fuels like coal and gas and oil to a green heaven of wind and solar, renewable energies. <laughs> now, who can argue with that? Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Newcomb, I can argue with that. It's true that at the point of power generation, nuclear plants emit relatively little CO2. But let's take a step back. Let's look at the whole fuel chain the mining, refinement, and enrichment of uranium that's used in reactors requires tremendous amounts of water, chemicals, electricity, and fossil fuels. When we actually look at the whole picture and not just that little teeny bit, nuclear power is in fact a net producer of greenhouse gases. And really, Mr. Newcomb, how can you claim that nuclear power does not pollute? Uranium mines contaminate huge areas, mostly on indigenous lands. All nuclear power facilities put radioactive particles into water and air, enough to cause disease, most often cancer. Adding to the nuclear fleet will only create more radioactive waste that is toxic for hundreds of thousands of years. Yet still, the nuclear industry and your buddies and fossil fuels persist with this mindset of extracting, using up, and poisoning the planet and leaving our children to clean up the mess. And about that green heaven you mentioned earlier, the continued use and development of nuclear power takes precious resources away from bringing truly sustainable technologies to scale. We know how to produce power without nuclear and fossil fuels. Let's get to work on that. I am warning you. Closing existing nuclear power plants will increase carbon emissions and speed up global warming. Look, uh, if our only option were to use natural gas, then you'd be absolutely right. Uh, we'd be increasing carbon emissions because natural gas is a fossil fuel. But that isn't our only option. And in fact, if we were using truly sustainable energy production systems like solar, we could be saving three quarters of what we'd be spending on nuclear plants. Recent technological advancements are transforming the way electricity is generated and distributed throughout the world. For instance, solar installation costs one-tenth of what it did in the year 2000. And we now have computerized systems designed to coordinate the distribution of available power on demand from many smaller sites. As a result, the large-scale baseload atomic plants are not only unnecessary, they are not only a terrible environmental hazard, they are economic liabilities. 
Only this flexible, smart grid approach will allow us to take best advantage of the different forms of truly sustainable electricity production, thereby lowering our greenhouse gas emissions. This is the path we must take in order to most quickly mitigate damage to our Earth from climate change. <laughs> you privileged environmental neo-hippies. <laughs> Who can afford your green energies anyway? <laughs> Nuclear power is still the cheapest way to generate energy. <laughs> Will Newcomb, it's the same old stuff year in and year out. But let's look at it. Nuclear power production is an expensive undertaking, especially when you compare it to alternatives that are sustainable, like solar and wind. The World Nuclear Industry Status Report for 2019 lays it out very clearly, and I'll quote, the cost of generating solar power ranges from $36 to $44 per megawatt hour, while onshore wind power comes in at $29 to $56 per megawatt hour. Nuclear energy costs between $112 and $189 per megawatt hour. The economic deficiencies of nuclear power production have been known for decades. The promise of power too cheap to meter was and is nothing more than an industry marketing ploy. In fact, when we look at the costs associated with storing radioactive waste for thousands of years, what we end up with is an opportunity to coin a more appropriate slogan, the power source that keeps on billing and billing and billing. All right. Waste is a bad word. Let's take a good word, shall we? Recycling. Recycling is a very good word. We're going to recycle those nuclear wastes and generate more electricity. <laughs> you certainly can't recycle the sun, can you? Really, Will? Recycling? What Will Newcomb's talking about is reprocessing. But the industry likes to put a smiley face on what they do. Recycling sounds responsible and good. Reprocessing, not so much. Originally, there was an ill-conceived idea that nuclear power would generate no waste. All the waste would be reprocessed again and again. Then, India tested a bomb in the 1970s and fears of proliferation and bad actors getting their hands on weapons-grade material led President Carter to end all research on reprocessing. So suddenly there was a waste problem. So is reprocessing an answer? It only makes the problem worse. Chemicals are used to separate the plutonium from the rest of the waste. Only 1% of the plutonium is reused. The rest becomes a huge volume of mixed waste, much of it contaminated with plutonium. There's no facility in America built to deal with this waste. The Department of Energy has estimated it would cost $20 billion to build one facility, and America needs at least two to just deal with the problem we have now. Look. There are no good solutions to nuclear waste. There are bad ones and really terrible ones. Because this waste will be dangerous for hundreds of thousands of years, we need the best solution. Not a profit-driven industry solution, not a politically expedient solution, but a solution to protect the American people and the environment. We need to put our best minds to create that solution, a scientifically sound and environmentally just one. Reading processing, isn't it? You fear-mongering naysayers. You're forgetting about thorium. Thorium reactors will make nuclear power safe and waste-free. Mm, 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 mm.
Thorium is named after Thor, the Norse god of thunder. But that doesn't mean it's the answer. Waste management, weapons proliferation, safety, economics, and sustainability remain persistent problems with nuclear power. Thorium-based reactors are presented by the industry as a silver bullet that eliminates all of these. However, 60 years of research and development shows us that thorium's potential to replace uranium as a fuel for nuclear power and solve these problems is dubious at best, despite the industry's claim to the contrary. The fact is that thorium reactors still generate radioactive waste, and that waste can still be used to create nuclear weapons. A small thorium reactor experiment at Oak Ridge National Lab in the 60s still defies cleanup. Any possible development of thorium reactors is tens of billions of dollars and at least two decades away, as it has been for the last 60 years. In fact, the American nuclear industry has no appetite for the development of these reactors, but holding out the promise of thorium reactors is a useful mirage for the nuclear industry's sales pitch. Historically, this industry has a pattern of promising that the solution to the problems inherent in nuclear power is just around the corner. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. I love you, tomorrow, you're always a day. Oh, I've got to get to the bank. <laughs> We hope our brief video was informative and that you will encourage others to watch it. Polluting industries, whether fossil fuels or nukes, work hard to get people to fight with each other over which forms of pollution and waste problems are the worst. Instead, we must unite to fight for what's best for our children, our communities, and our planet. Citizens Awareness Network is working to build closer ties with climate action groups and to promote our shared goal of clean, green, sustainable power generation. We're hoping that your group will adopt an explicitly anti-nuclear stance as we all work toward the same goals.